Okay, welcome to episode 20 of Knits and Pieces. I'm Noelle. And I'm Kelly. And we're coming to you from Courtright, sunny, Ontario. Sunny Courtright. Very sunny and warm. And warm? Too mm-hmm. warm too warm for mohair sweaters. Definitely not November weather. No. No, no. but we'll take it. We'll take it. So, um, We'd like to thank anybody that's watched us. Mm-hmm. And we've had quite a few new subscribers, so thank you for subscribing. Um, yeah, we're having a good time. We are. So We are. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of admin. Kelly's going to tell you a little bit about our mitten cow. Our mitten cow. So uh, we're hosting a mitten cow on Ravelry, and uh, it runs until November the 30th. Yes. And you can make a pair of mittens, and it can be uh, knitting, it can mm-hmm. be crocheting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess it could be any other way. It's making mittens, so right. any other way that you could come up to make a pair of mittens. Mm-hmm. And uh, they can be a full mitten, they can be fingerless mittens, uh, they can be color work, they could be plain. They could be gloves. They could be gloves. If you want to do gloves. They could be gloves, yep. yes. And um, we have a prize yes. for that, and I can show you the prize. It's a, uh, a bag from the Tangled Stitch Shop, which, yes. which is me. Yes, it's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, mittens. It's perfect. With a little knitted, uh, or knitted print for the bottom as well. And uh, it's lined with a little white polka dot lining so that you can see everything that's inside yeah but this fabric's really nice too it's like a knit stitch yeah it is yeah, it it's just really like pretty. it's been like a knit stitch so yeah. it's it's really pretty and uh, it's covered in mittens so it's the perfect yeah. little and it would be perfect size for a pair of mittens you could put a pair of socks in there yes so and actually i find they're they're pretty substantial you can actually fit quite a bit in there yeah um and we're coming into winter, so mm-hmm. it's a winter theme. Mm-hmm. I don't like to use the word Christmas theme because I like to think you can use it all winter. Use them all winter. Mm-hmm. So this is the little Nordic mitten bag, and that will be one of the prizes. And then also, um, as part of the prize, is the as a mitten label, and we're going to talk about those later. Um, but that will be included that I can email to the winner as well. Yeah, so, and we'll we'll show you as we go through our um, finished objects and works in in progress that we've got some ideas and some mittens on the go. Mm-hmm. So, and then Kelly, you wanted to just show that the book. Mm-hmm. So this is a book that uh, Noelle gave me last year. Was it for my birthday? I think it was for Christmas. I for Christmas got us both one. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody doesn't know about this book yet, this is the Selbu Mitten book, and it is. I like to call it a coffee table book with a purpose because it. Aside from all of the absolutely stunning pictures, I don't know, like there's a real history too on knitting and it shows there's, I don't know if these are pictures from a museum actually, but there's like some real vintage, vintage Mm -hmm. knitting in here. Um, But then as it gets into it, it gives you not only technique, but it gives you so many patterns and this book is full of patterns. So it's just, it's really a full book of inspiration. and it does, it has gloves in there too. And it's, you can take, you can kind of take the charts and you can kind of mix and match them. So mm-hmm. you basically design your own mm-hmm. pair. And it says that there are over 500 charts. So I could knit until, <laughs> I can't knit anymore. And I, I still couldn't knit buy more yarn than 500 pairs. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Um, and there's 35 classic patterns for you. So then once you have the basic pattern, then you can, uh, switch in any of the charts that you want to make yeah and i'm pretty sure that you could uh, you could put these into hats i think so like because you you've got the graphs right so yes it's just a graph and then socks. You, socks definitely mm-hmm. into socks so you could knit yourself an entire winter wardrobe just from one book mm-hmm. it could be a skirt you could, could knit be. multiple could charts and it could actually be a skirt okay but. you can work on the skirt <laughs> in fingering weight yarn yes but it, it's a beautiful book and uh, it's it's a great read it's just it's just beautiful to look at and it's really inspirational and I think originally when the book came out it was in Norwegian yeah and then now it's translated into English because I think a lot of people even that couldn't speak Norwegian bought it because you could follow the charts right yeah because the charts Charting are, is a universal language right yes so okay, okay awesome okay so now we're going to move on to and for my sake here, we're going to have a little um, 
work sock update. Probably every podcast from now to Christmas because I'm working on work socks for my family for Christmas. So um, last time, I believe that I was working on this pair. So they've got the, um, the green up at the top, which I believe is spruce. No, it's not either, because I did spruce once. This is a different green that I had because I got enough men to knit for that I have to choose colors that I know they're gonna wear, okay? So that one I think I had started, so I finished that pair. Okay, there's the second one. And I also knit a little ornament to go with the sock. So for this one, I, okay. Hold okay. My arms were a so this longer. one I did the snowman. This is the Moki Moki snowman, and this is by Anna. I can't pronounce her last name, but it's it's um, Prochovic, I believe is how you pronounce it. But it will be in the show notes. So what I did a little bit different on this one, instead of just doing them all in snow, I just made a little marled sweater. <laughs> I have to change it up because there's a lot of knitting here. Okay, and then I've also finished this pair. So this pair is done in purple rain, and this is one of the Leo and Roxy colors. And I should say this original pattern was by Pamela Graham for Leo and Roxy, and they sold these as kits with the, the Leo, which is the cream color, the marl, and the contrasting color, which in this case is the purple rain. And then I also have a little snowman to go with this one. So this time they've got the, the purple rain sweater on. That is too cute. So the snowmen are really fun to do. I think they need hats too, Noah. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> next year maybe that's all they'll get is hats for their snowmen. And then I've moved on to my next pair and I've got one sock done. And this sock has gold trim and this gold is actually turtle pearl yarns it's really and she's pretty. a uh, dyer out in new brunswick, new brunswick, brunswick Coach, I, think. I think new brunswick anyways and so i don't have um i don't have a snowman or a, a sweater done for this one yet but i will and one thing i wanted to say about doing these um when you're doing stripes in your rib um i don't it's not my favorite style to see the little bit of the other color show through. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing stripes in the rib and you don't want that, all you have to do is every time you change Don't color you. is knit around first and then go back to your rib. And then when you change color, knit a plain round first and then change back to your rib. And then you'll get this, like it's kind of, I don't know, seamless. Like you don't see the, any of that, the little white showing through yes. on your rib. Yep. So that's one thing that I do with them just so that the stripes are clear and crisp. Mm -hmm. So. And I also want to comment, I, well, I made one pair to your <laughs> many pairs, one pair for me and it was warmer. So I hadn't been wearing them, but I wore them last weekend for the first time and I want to wear them every day. Yeah, that's So I have exactly soft. enough to make a second pair and I was planning to make a second pair and gift them away, but I don't know that I will because they're, they may become my favorite sock. They are the best fitting and there's something about the, um, the fabric that this marl makes. It's a really... It's, it's like a nice thin, it's, it's thin, but it's cushy. It's, like it's, it's not, cushy, like yeah. it's, it's hard to explain, but it's, it is thinner, but, but because which is the, nice. Cause then the, the bottom of the sock fits nice in your shoes. Yes. It but does. it still feels like cozy and soft. And, it does. And that three by one rib just stays nice yeah. and snug on your feet all day. I really like it. Yep. Really, really love it. Okay. So I do have my second gold one cast on and I'm just working away at them. I want to point out too the little jingling that you just heard. We don't have elves in the knitting. It's <laughs> we Roxy. Wish we did. <laughs> it's my cat Roxy, and she wears a collar with a bell. She's a rescue cat, and um, she came with a collar with a bell. And I tried. I, I did take the collar off because I don't. My other cat doesn't wear a collar, and I took the collar off. And then she acted very strangely. Oh, I think it. She's I think used that to it. she thought that sound was coming from her. And she kept looking around all skittish, wondering where her, her bell was. So we had to put one back on her. So she was just over here trying to see what Noelle had in the, <laughs> in the goodie bags behind us making noise. So, Okay, so now we'll move on to our FOs. No, how about what we're wearing? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to move on to what we're wearing. My notes are right in front of me. She writes notes so she can go <laughs> off script. <laughs> okay, you go first while I compose myself. <laughs> um... Okay, so I'm wearing a Love Note sweater, and this this yarn I actually got almost a year ago mm -hmm. today 
Oh, really? Today? Yeah, it was actually. It yeah. was. We were in uh, Columbus, yes. Ohio for VKL, Vogue Knitting Live. And um, this, I was very mindful for shopping when we were there. And this was a complete friend enabled impulse buy. It's Emma's yarn and it's two strands held together. So it's uh, a fingering weight and the fingering weight is called Cosmic. Okay. Or like is that the is that Orbit. the color or the name of the yarn? The yarn is her fingering. I guess it would be like a sock weight. Okay. 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 So uh, it was called Orbit, and then I held it together with a mohair strand, and this the mohair strand is called Wish You Were Beer, <laughs> and I I love gold colors. So that's like kind of my range, and uh, it called from me across the booth, and enabler friends. Okay, said, but get it. Just get it. Aren't you glad you got it? I'm. Super happy I got it. I love the sweater. It's my second love note sweater. I loved making the first one so much. It's a fun pattern. It's a really, really quick knit. And the Emma's yarn, so the Orbit color, uh, comes in a, it's a 150 gram yeah. skein. So it's called a Hella Hank. And so with one skein, I was able to make the sweater. I did have to buy two skeins of the mohair, but I have enough mohair to make um, yeah. Add it into some mittens yeah. or a hat, um, and I, I love yeah, it's nice. love this color. And I love it's a the color beautiful of it. color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, and I am also wearing a love note. Uh, this was the very first one that I knit. So this one is made out of Barocco summer silk. Uh, the color is I forgot to look at it. I think it's called Petal. Anyway, but the Baroque Summer Silk is like a silk cotton blend with a little bit of nylon in it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's actually almost perfect for this type of weather that we're having yes. right now. Yeah. Um, I actually took this when we went to Italy and it was perfect to throw on over a sundress in the evening. It's just that little layer, but it's not hot or... Mm -hmm. So it's really comfortable and nice to wear. And since then, I've also made a baby love note mm -hmm. for one of my granddaughters. And I can't recommend this pattern enough. It's just... Mm -hmm. It's it's super easy to knit. It's is easy to wear. Mm -hmm. um, goes with a lot of things. There's a lot of adjustments that you can make in it to make it fit how you want. Like you can make it longer or shorter. There is a dropped hem at the back if you want to do that. Yes. Um, one thing that I do want to say is they do start off with a provisional cast on for the neck. And then you go back and you pick up the stitches and knit up just in case you want it looser or tighter. I didn't do that. I just figured what I wanted and cast on from the beginning and knit I, down. I did that for my first sweater, the first love note, just because I, I want it. Sometimes I just like to stay a little true to a pattern and try to figure out why the designer is having you do, do something. Mm -hmm. But I was so comfortable with the neckline. like It didn't need any adjustments. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the reason they do that is some people have found that the neckline is either uh, a little too snug or a little too open. And I didn't feel that mine needed any adjustment. So... No after having knit the first one, which I also knit with mohair, uh, I when I cast this one on, I just I dove right in. So I used a tubular cast on mm -hmm. for the neckline and then I, I bound off using yeah. tubular as well. Yeah, and I think it, what with the neck, it might depend on, on what fabric you're knitting to, like what gauge you're knitting to, because mm -hmm. I think I my gauge is actually a little smaller than what the pattern calls for. Mm -hmm. But, you, but, I, I, you but I adjusted it. Yes, yeah. I did go down a needle size. and then I But then I also, like adjusted for the size I was doing based on what my tension was. Right. So your neck, depending on what you're doing, might be smaller or bigger, just depending on what what yarn you're using and what gauge you're going with. Mm -hmm. So, And uh, I like that it's so versatile. So this kind of shows you, we, we did this purposely so that you could see the difference in the pattern mm -hmm. between the different weights of the mm -hmm. yarn, how you can get a very different looking sweater. Yeah, so, but definitely I know I'm gonna do more. It has to be one of the more popular sweaters on, yes, it uh, is. on Ravelry or in the knitting world. And I've seen so many, done so many different ways. And I haven't really been But it, it's kind of like a sweater that you can dress up or dress down, right? It, yeah. can, it can go over a dress or it's fine just with a pair of jeans. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's nice to have that versatility in a garment. Okay. Yes. So do you want to tell us a little bit about what Beatrice is wearing? <laughs> well, Beatrice... Bernice. Bernice is... Oh, Bernice, not Beatrice. Beatrice. Is her name? You just said Bernice.
going. Just cut that part out. <laughs> Beatrice is wearing the Bobble Shawl by Andrea Mowry and this um, three different yarns so I this is a hedgehog single in artifact and this is the gold is Utopia uh, Wisco in Maple Bloom and the Burgundy is Sublime this was my first brioche project it's gorgeous and I, I really 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 like it um, it was fun. It was, it was, it was a little challenging, and uh, did it start with the brioche part, or does it start with? No, it starts with a garter stripe. Okay, and then kind of warms you up, I to, guess, yeah. for the brioche. But um, there were a few friends on on Instagram that I have, and they wanted to try some brioche as well. So we kind of challenged one another, chose a pattern, and we jumped in and. We had one person in the group that was a really experienced brioche knitter and she coached us along if we needed any help, but it was it was a lot of fun. I want to do another project and I actually did just download a pattern this week for, for yeah. a hat, the old old bay hat. Oh, is that that's another Andrea Maori. And it's another yeah. Andrea Maori. Mm -hmm. And she had some tutorials online, mm -hmm. so if you get stuck, it was easy to go on and find out uh, what you needed to do to get well, back I think on it's, track. Like, I think it's you just kind of have to take it step by step and follow the mm -hmm. the directions like it's not anything really difficult it's just different than what you're used to doing yeah i think mostly it was a mindset like mm -hmm. i had it just in my mind that oh only really really good knitters can do brioche and no really anybody can yeah. brioche there are probably a lot more technical aspects you know when you're changing directions yep. and things like that but it was a lot of fun we mm -hmm. we had a lot of fun doing it and I love the shawl. I've gotten I some good wear out of it. It's gorgeous, and the colors are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I um, like I find with brioche, what I'd really like to get better at is fixing a mistake. If you make a mistake, that's where I find it. I can't read it as well as what I can read my regular knitting to right. go back and fix something. And I think that's that's definitely one of the tricky parts too. So the key to that is just you know, don't make a mistake. <laughs> I know, but I don't know. I haven't. Done, did you put lifelines in anywhere? Nope. No. I don't like to use lifelines. I'll freewheel it. And the only time I put like a lifeline in, I've never needed it. And the time I needed it, didn't have it. <laughs> didn't have it. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. Okay, so we will move on to our finished objects. Okay, so Kelly. Finished objects. Finished objects. Okay, so since this episode is called Warm Hands, Warm Heart, we focused this week on some uh, mittens and fingerless mm -hmm. mittens. And maybe just to try to give you some guidance or to inspire you to do something for the mitten make along. So the first pair, we'll go over the ones, we both did the same yeah. pair. So this is the, um, the Taxis mittens. And this pattern is by Ann Meyer, and they're gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. These aren't blocked yet, uh, but they, they're so cozy. So this was made in the Rauma Lamel Lamel Garn. Is it Lamel, Lamel Garn or I don't know how you pronounce it. Anyways, Lamel This is Garn. the Lamel. Well, we don't know if we're pronouncing it right, but it's, I know it's the right yarn, right. the Rama Lamel Garn. And the fit on these is, is great. And the yarn is thin, but this is such a squishy mitten. And the pattern is written with the charts all to go the same way, but I did flip the charts so that I could have um, a mirrored image mm -hmm. for my mittens. And maybe we should talk about Knit Companion. We are both big supporters of Knit of Companion. Knit Companion. Yep. Uh, that is a program and it's available for Android as well as um, Mac or iOS. iOS products. And it allows you to bring your project into the program. Mm -hmm. And so you can have the entire pattern, but then it will also break out the charts. And then you have some ability, like in this case, there were two charts because there's a, a hand chart as well as a thumb chart. Mm -hmm. 
and it allows you the ability to just clip the charts and then piece them together so mm -hmm. that you can have the whole project. It's a, I, I don't, to say I don't know how I would knit without it, I mean, yes, I could knit without it, but it just makes life easier. I would definitely be a lot slower knitting without it. Mm -hmm. Because when you're done a row, you just click up to the next row. Whereas if you've got it printed out and you're moving tape up and, you know, like I've got grandchildren that are around now, who knows where the tape might be by the time I go back to my next, mm -hmm. you know, whereas if you, if you just click up in Knit Companion, it's there until you come back and you move it again. Mm -hmm. Plus it gives you the ability to flip that chart so that if you are doing a mirrored image, you can just flip the chart in Knit Companion and the, the inverse of it is there for you to work from. Right. So there's... Yeah, actually, that's that was the best part, the easiest part, I guess, for yep. flipping uh, instead of having to try to, you know, rechart or to redo redraw your charts. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is that there's two versions. So there's a there's a free version which I used for years, and uh, you aren't able to do the charting with no. the free version, and it is an annual subscription too. But um, I think because I just renewed, and I I want to say it was around twenty four dollars for the year, but if if you're making enough projects mm -hmm. that require charts, $24 is a pretty small investment. Well, That's... plus you can put all your notes about that project in there too. And you can write right on the screen. I write on the screen yeah. a lot. So you, you can use your, um, like if you have a stylus mm -hmm. or sometimes I just use my finger. finger yep. uh, because oftentimes you need to make as a small change. Like in, for instance, in these ones, I have a long, longer hand. So I had to add a couple of the gray rows in here. And then I added, there was somewhere else that I added just a couple of rows just to get the right length for yeah. my hand. And so I just wrote that note on there. So by the time I came around to doing the second mitten, the notes were already there yeah. and it was easy to follow. And yeah, I can't say enough good things about the, about the app. Yep. Yeah. So, and I have the same mittens, but mine are done with, I should put them on. Mine are done in Holst Super Soft. So they're different color than Kelly's and a little bit different yarn and they do feel a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And again, I did mirror image so that they're, so that they look right to me. <laughs> and these were done with Holst Super Soft. The gray is called gray flannel. The cream color is, um, called bleached white and then the pink color is called damson mm -hmm. and I think I did mine on a 2.75 millimeter needle and I think you did a 2.5 I actually or did you do 2.75 no I was gonna say I did a 2.2 no I used a 2.5 okay and but I I know that I knit tight you knit quite a bit tighter yeah yeah so and I actually had to adjust I think I had to maybe leave off a row or so at the top or they would have been too long and same with on the thumb. But because you're doing them and you can try them on as you go along, you can kind of like, if I knew what my rows were, I, again, because you added rows in here, right? Mm -hmm. Where the top. So when you're trying them on as you go, I'll go along, you can kind of get a better idea of what adjustments you need to make. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and hardly any yarn. Hardly any yarn. I wrote down what I used. So of the of the gray, I only used 28 uh, grams, and the rest was seven grams, and the navy was nine grams. So literally, like nothing. I know, and and mine was even less. It was 24 grams of the gray, six grams of each of the bleached white and the damask. So I mean, super light, but I think they're going to be nice and warm. Mm -hmm. So, and you wanted to talk a little bit about the knitting inside out. Right. Well, firstly. Um, so there was a couple of techniques that we used in here. So when I uh, when I cast on, I did the ribbing. Mm -hmm. We're using two 16-inch uh, circulars just to go back and forth. It was quicker. But then uh, when I did the first mitten, I stayed with that. And I didn't like it. as. And then once I got up past the thumb gusset, I switched to a 9-inch needle. And I worked up as far as I could with the 9-inch needle. But when I did the second mitten, I decided to just go for it. And I used the nine inch needle for the, the whole mitten up like through the, the gusset. Not the rib, okay. sorry, not the okay. rib, but from here on. And I like that mitten a little bit better. And then when I got to the thumb, I flipped the, the mitten inside out and I did the thumb inside out. And I had a couple of, I had posted something about that on Instagram and I had a couple of comments. People didn't know that they, that you could do that. 
the reason for knitting inside out, I'll just quickly flip this and show you, is so that if you're knitting, you're still knitting, um, although it's called inside out, basically what it would look like is you would be knitting on like this side of the stitches, but your mitten is actually turned inside out. And the reason that you do that is so that your yarn is being carried on the outside instead of an inside, because sometimes you can tend to um, pull a little tight if your carries, your floats are inside the project, and especially on something that's a small diameter. Yeah. So I didn't knit the mitten itself inside out, but I did knit the thumb inside out because it's you know a tiny little circumference, just I think there's 23 stitches. So to knit that on the outside and carry the floats on the outside. And I was going to say too that if anybody needed help with that technique, just send us a message on here. I'd be happy to do a quick little yep. tutorial and show you how I set up on the needles for doing, doing them inside, inside out. out. Mm -hmm. And I did, I actually did my whole, did the I whole... did the rib, I did the rib on two circulars, but then I did the whole mitt part until I was too few stitches at the top to be on the nine inch circ, but I did it all inside out. Mm -hmm. I did the whole thing inside out. And I even found when I did the thumb, you obviously can't do that on the nine inch circ. So I went back to the two, mm -hmm. yeah, two uh, needles, mm -hmm. right. And, but I did do it inside out mm -hmm. on one of them when I was doing it, I'd forgotten and I thought, why is this so hard? And then the minute I flipped it inside out, it just seemed easier. so much easier to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so those are one pair done. Okay. And then I also have these. Oh, nice. <laughs> these are so pretty. These are the Hedgerow Fingerless Mittens by Marianne Stevens. And this is yarn that we got on another trip when we could still travel. Right. Um, this was from New York. And this was actually at Nitty City that I got this. And we were there for Vogue Knitting Live at the end of January, right? Yeah, towards the end. Towards the end? Yep. So I knit these, and this is a really dense fabric. Um, it is a fingering. So the yarn is called Elemental Effects Natural Shetland Fingering. And again, such a tiny amount. There's only in this, the garnet and the gray, there's 16 grams each of those. And then I put on this ochre trim, and there's only five grams wow. of ochre used in here. But it, there's just a really beautiful fitting. But that, that yarn feels thicker than the Brahma that you used. Yes, I think it itself. is thicker. And I yeah. did knit these on a 2.25. Oh, okay, um, and that would make them dense. So it's too. a really dense fabric, but it they fit. Yeah, they're nice. Really, really nice, and they're so cozy. They're one of my favorites. And I like I like fingerless mittens for driving because I don't like my whole hands mm -hmm. covered in. And actually, um, I had knit a pair of fingerless mitting mittens last year or the year before and gave them to my daughter-in-law. And what she does is she wears mm -hmm. her thin gloves underneath, oh, and right. then she sticks mm -hmm. the the fingerless pair over top and you've got warmth in through here but your, your fingers are still kind of a little bit more well that's a really good idea building. yeah yeah well marianne stevens has um i think color work is sort of the thing that she's most attracted to she has some beautiful patterns, beautiful yeah. patterns and this row this one the hedge row these are actually this is a free pattern that she offers and uh i would like to knit some more of them i think mm. they're really pretty okay so i also <laughs> have a pair of fingerless mittens so these are the Innes mittens, and they are by um, Emily Maracal. And again, this is also a free pattern. Uh, these are done on a 4.5 millimeter needle. This yarn is fleece artist Kid Aaron, and it is, a, I think it's 50-50, uh, yeah, 50-50 right? mohair merino. So it, it does feel really nice, and you just get that little bit of a halo. It's got a nice cable pattern in it. So like, honestly, this would be, a perfect beginner mitt pattern mm -hmm. because the cable's pretty easy. It's, you know, there's not a lot of, um, it's only like a three stitch or something. I think I did it all with, out using a cable needle. Mm -hmm. um, you can do twisted rib in the cuff. You've got a few increases, but there's like not a whole lot of detail, like as far as shaping or anything. So it would be a really easy beginner and a, project. a really quick one too. Yeah, and, and a really I, quick one. I love a fat cable. So It's nice. It's really nice. And they're so soft. There, and yeah, and this color was called brick, but I think it's a perfect fall color. Mm -hmm. Like it just looks like the leaves and 
So, and that took, I think, 50 grams of yarn. So 50 grams of an Aran weight yarn. So, I mean, it would make a quick, awesome gift to give to someone. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> My last pair of mittens. This is the Hastings Mitts pattern by Tracy Miller. And I used, so she calls, the pattern calls for worsted weight. And this is actually, well, the gray is a Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. And the, the blue is called Electric by Hedgehog. And it's the um, Merino. Aaron. Merino Aaron. Okay. So it's a little thicker than a worsted. So I, to compensate, I had to go down a needle and I did a few less rows. And when I was first making them, I still thought they were gonna be a little bit too big, but these, <clears throat> I had just finished the Taxus mittens. Yes. And you know, your mindset is on something that's finer. And these are definitely a bulky, nice, really nice bulky mitten. And I got this pattern actually when I was at Knit City in Vancouver two years ago now oh, and <laughs> I know when we could travel and she named this pattern after Hastings Street in Vancouver which is where the festival was held okay and, I didn't know that yeah and I really they're pretty I really like the pattern yeah and now that it's done I'm, I love I'm this I how love thick the thumb it, I know I love the thumb that stripey rib yeah. thumb so it's a really it's a clever pattern and, oh the rib at the top twisted rib yeah. at the top so it's just something a little bit different like yeah. it's, it's not a Usually this would just be a stockinette sure. yep. stitch. So it's a little, you know, a bulkier, it's just a bulkier mitten. And I really like it. She gives you two options. So because I use the Aran weight, the mitten turned out a little bit bigger. But if you had just been using a worsted weight, she actually shows the pattern. So I, I did it where the thumb starts right after the cuff. But she actually shows the pattern in two different ways where you can elongate this so okay. that you would have a mitten that comes okay. further okay. up the arm. Uh, if you like, so I just did the sh the shorter pattern, but I really, yeah, I really pretty. like them. I love that blue color. That's a gorgeous blue. Yeah, it's very pretty, and they're really, really well. They're too warm for today. Well, they'll be good for for walking in the winter. They will. Yeah, they will. And I think, um, so I still have quite a bit. I think about fifty grams is Great. what I used in the, in for the Aaron weight and. But yeah, this was just kind of a one skein product. And this would be quick. Like, yes. Cause, if you're yeah. looking to do quick mittens, this was just a couple of evenings. Yeah. So very fun. Very pretty. Okay. I have another pair of fingerless mitts. These ones are called um, Cloudburst. They're so pretty. So these are done in drop salpaca. It took less than a skein. I think it was 40 grams and the, and the skeins are 50 grams. Mm -hmm. um, the pattern is by... Ariane Gray, and I got it on Ravelry. That's a fr it's a free pattern. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think I changed it at all, so except the, I did a, a twisted rib. I did a twisted rib, and I did a tubular, tubular cast, cast off. off. And is that in the pattern as well, no. the tubular? No, but I just like the tubular when it comes to the top of something like that. It's so pretty, and they're so soft. So again, perfect gift giving. Yeah, yeah, because like I said, it's like less than a skein of yarn, and that yarn's not that expensive. And I mean, like I, I can see even just wearing these in the house when it's cooler. Or in an office. Or an office, yep. I know uh, there's a lot of people that wear it there. This is what I started making for, for Kendall, my daughter, mm -hmm. her office. Well, she works from home now, but when yeah, she well, was at the office, she was always complaining how cold her office is. So I would make her fingerless mittens and that way you can still use them on your keyboard and uh, yeah. And these, these were are on, these are a three millimeter, I think, but still they worked up fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. In fact, I did one of the mitts twice. Okay. So I put, I put my projects in Ravelry and I put information like the yarn I'm using. I put the needle size that I'm using because even if it's only a couple of days before I go back to something, I'm knitting different things in the meantime. And I forget like what size needle I used or whatever. So I started the second mitt and I, I went and I looked and I thought it was three millimeter. And I, said, and I thought, no, I didn't use a three millimeter. So I used a three and a quarter millimeter and I kept knitting the mitt all the way. And I kept looking at it going, this the yarn must be like, it's just really this part of the ball is really thin because it's just not working the same. And then in the end, when I tried it on beside the other one, I figured out that I used the wrong size needle. And I couldn't leave it. I had to go back. I had to rip it back right back to the cuff and do the, <laughs> do the right size needle. So they're really fast. <laughs> I 
Anyway, so if you take notes, believe them. Yes, <laughs> believe them. them. That's what they're there for. That's what they're there for. So, okay. And then I've got a pair of socks. These were socks that I was working on last time. They were for my husband for his birthday. Um, so there's not, it's not any pattern. It's just a pattern that I made up. It's just a 72 a stitch sock. Uh, it's a one by one twisted rib at the top. And I brought the cable up into the twisted rib. The cable is just a four stitch cable that I offset so that it doesn't really look like a cable. It looks more like, I don't know what you call that. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a name for it, but I don't know what it is, but it's just where you, um, every four rows do the opposite. Like if you twist one way, you twist the opposite way on oh, the next, okay. mm -hmm. the next four rows. So this is, um, Croy, Patton's Croy and it's camo colors. And this is actually like my husband's favorite kind of sock yarn. It can't be Croy. Cause it just, especially for men. Yes. They can't yeah, wear it It takes out. the abuse. It, it wears well. Um, it's just an afterthought heel and I did run out of the camo colors. So in both of them, I just used a tiny bit of, I'm not holding it in the right place there. Here we go. Again, I just used a tiny bit of the flax color in the Patton's Croy to finish off the heel and it blends in okay. You can't even tell it's a different no. one. So yeah, I like that. Cause sometimes the Croy is, the Croy is 50 gram balls, but I think there's only like 166 yards. So it's a little bit mm -hmm. short and I still do it on a 2.25 millimeter needle. So mm -hmm. it's a really sturdy fabric. So it is really good for, for men's socks. Okay, and then my last finished object, I'm talking about mittens, is this tiny salbu mitten. And it's just a little mitten ornament. So that little ornament is by, um, okay, it's Mir Veer on Ravelry, but her name is Miriam Rosie Watney. Okay, she's from Norway. It's even glitter yarn. I yeah, it is glitter yarn. It's done, in, it's done in Regia soft glitter in the light blue and the white or cream. Um, free pattern. Believe it or not, there is even on the pattern, there is it's an thumb. option to put a little thumb in it. It's just a thumb. But there's an option to put like a real little tiny thumb. And I thought, yeah, I'm not <laughs> doing that. <laughs> so, but anyway, it makes a cute little ornament. And again, even like for a little... Um, like top her on a gift mm -hmm. and then you can still hang it on your tree. Okay. Okay. And is that it for your FOs? That's it for my FOs. So on the last episode, I showed the little dude sweater. Yes. And, so cute. Uh, but it has, it has since been gifted and James was quite happy to get it. He's, uh, he's just a little over a year old and it's funny. He, I mean, there's no way he could know what a new sweater is, but the night that we took it out to him, he, his mom put it on him and he knew he had something to be excited about. He was running up and down the hallway and he'd stop and he'd look over his shoulder and uh, he would smile back yeah. at us and want us to chase him. And he was like proud of his new sweater. So we're going to finish up this segment. I'm going to insert a few photos because he's just too cute wearing yeah. his little man sweater to not see that sweater in action. And it did look like he had, there was good size in it that it should fit him for a while. Yeah. I made yeah. the one to two years and um, it, I think the only thing, like, and if I look at the pictures that I would have done differently if I'd realized it, the pattern called for three buttons. So mm -hmm. there's a fair bit of space between the buttons. And when there's a couple of the pictures that she sent to me and he was sitting down and you get a little bit of the spread, you know, around the buttons. And I think if I had it to do over, maybe I would have done four. Oh, yeah. I think four would have yeah. been the perfect number. And I think when you did the little, you did a little one and I think you did use four and I should have, uh, I should have done that. But other than that, the sweater's perfect. It's cute. Yeah, it's cute. Parents love it. The pictures are super cute. So that's how we'll finish. Are you doing the big one for the dad? No, I'm not doing the big one for his dad. <laughs> I don't care. Teach his wife to knit. Uh, no, <laughs> and I don't care how many times he asks. The answer will still be no. But it's it is a very cute sweater, and that'll be something that they can hold on to and pass down to. That's what she said. She yeah. said, yeah, she says, uh, somebody else will, you know, get the benefit of it as well. Yeah. Because he's not going to be in it for, you know, no. a super long time at that age. So, all right. Okay. <laughs> so now we will move on to whips. Okay. I'll start with my first whip here. It's 
So, oops, I got tangled in this one. Okay. So this is a slouch sock. Um, the pattern is actually sort of um, customizable toe up sock. I'm just, I just used it for kind of the start and the heel. This yarn is Shirley Bryan Deconstructed Fade. And the so colorway pretty. is Cocoa Beach Grudge Jurassic, is what it's called. Um, this yarn was gifted to me by my daughter-in-law, who, who I taught, she could knit, she could knit and purl, but I, I helped her kind of do some shawls and some socks. And she just finished her first pair of socks and they look amazing. So anyways, I was over there one day and she said, I have something for you. And she brought out this yarn and fleece, which I didn't bring, but I will once I get my spinning wheel. But this yarn from Shirley Bryan comes skeined in two separate skeins so that you can get perfectly matching socks. And because of the fade on it, I wanted to use every bit of the yarn. So mm -hmm. I thought the best way to do that was to go toe up. Mm -hmm. And I'll take this off and show you how long this is. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> they're, uh, <laughs> they're like neat, well, almost thigh, thigh high <laughs> socks for Noelle. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to use all every little bit of the yarn, so... So the technique in this in this toe up sock, it's kind of neat. You do the the toe, and I use the um, Turkish cast on, increase to the number of stitches that I usually increase to, and then it's got you do the heel flap. But here the heel flap actually turns out to be your sole, the sole, yeah, on the sole of your heel, like so that, and that's where you would wear out your sock, and then the gussets kind of the heel turn is at the very bottom of your foot and kind of goes up your ankle. Yeah, that is different. So I thought, yeah, so I thought that was kind of neat. Actually, um, when I was up in Bala, Tracy was doing this kind of oh, okay. heel and toe, and I thought it looked really neat. And the toe-up pattern here, this customizable toe-up pattern, is by Jana Knits a lot. I'm not sure if that's really your last name. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyways, it's got really good information in it. It's kind of like a sock recipe. So I just went to that and went from there. So really, really love the colors in this. It's gorgeous. It oh, it feels super yeah. nice too. And it's I just want it as a slouchy sock because I want to yeah. see all the colors when I put it on over. And then, you know, like kind of having that at the top of your blendstone. Well, that's what I was thinking. I can't believe you didn't start with the pink so you can see the foot. But now I know why. It's because you planned I want to see, you want yes, to see I this. I want to see that outside yeah. of the... It's really yes, pretty. Yes, I did really have to think about where I wanted to put that, and I thought, no, I want to see the pinks when they're out. Yeah, it's such a gentle fade, too, mm -hmm. from color to color. Mm -hmm. Really pretty. And it's 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 kind of addictive knitting, like when you're doing a striped sock, because you're always moving into the next mm -hmm. the next color. Yeah. So, yeah, I love Beautiful. it. And I mean, it's not like you look at it in the skein, and you would not, you would know, not know. You would not know that that's how it's going to knit. Like, I was actually surprised there was as much pink in it, because when you look at the skein, there's more of the coral. Mm -hmm. But yeah, gorgeous. Beautiful. So. And then I have a project that uh, I'm going to bring out of retirement. Well, it wasn't in retirement. No. So I started this in New York. And I, again, in January. Yes. I have a picture, I think, from the hotel. And um, I had been, this is the 8th Avenue Shawl by Cozy Up Knits. And it calls for mini skeins. So... Um, I think I went through three festivals of looking for the perfect mini skeins to use be because I think I needed 20 gram, 20 gram skeins. And it was hard. A lot of the minis that I was finding were 15, so it was okay. just a little shy. And I, so finally we went to uh, Columbus. Colum Columbus. Yeah, it was in Columbus, yeah. In Columbus. And we met Tanya from Cornbread and Honey. Mm -hmm. And she has the most beautiful colors so she put this bundle together for me and it's just i don't know like you can just see there's like a little a pinky mauve and then this burgundy this teal and black so there's the four colors and then they're going to repeat again and then of course you know it's going to look a lot different once it's blocked out too does it does it mirror or does it well that's up to me okay and i haven't decided what i want it to do if i want to have you know like i'm thinking when the shawl is finished at the end like what i want two black ends Right. Or would I just repeat again from the, from the black flag. and then so at the base of your shawl, because it is a shawl, you know, it's not a triangle or no. anything, right? So it's going to kind of wrap around your yeah. neck that way. So you're definitely going to have two ends hanging. Mm -hmm. So I'm at the, I'm at the half point now. So I have to make a decision and I don't know, 
I can't decide what I want my decision to be. I, I think, I think that I'm going to start with the black again. And so that by the time, you know, the shawl ends up at the ends, don't I'm going to have that's two probably, different. That's probably what I would do. But yeah. I, but I don't want to influence you. So you that I would have two colors like. at the end. And so, yeah, because I don't really think it needs to be, because then. No, because I really, because this like would all be colors, at the neck. That's right. And then you wouldn't really see them. Whereas no. if you, if you mirror it, if, or not mirror it, but if you go down the other way with, with in the same colors, then you'll see all the colors where mm -hmm. you've got the. That's what I, that's my instinct. So I think yeah. that's where I'm headed. But the lace in it is really pretty. So I'm anxious to see it blocked out. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's beautiful. It is a pretty pattern. There's a little bit of a slip stitch in there too, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice. And then this little lace, it's it's a nice pattern. Well, it looks like it would be fun to knit too because you're always changing into something. Yeah, yeah. It's very pretty. Yeah, gorgeous. I remember picking out those colors. <laughs> I remember looking for them at lots of places. So. Okay, so my next whip is, this is the shawl that I had just started last time. So this is uh, the Suburban Wrap by Hohi Locatelli, and it is done in Madeline Tosh Pashmina. The purple is called Purple Basil, the cream color is Modern Fair Isle, and this goldy color is called Spicewood. So um, I'm at the point now where the Spicewood will go in again, and then I can't remember, I can't remember what else, but it's really fun to knit it, and I think, again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to block out huge. Mm -hmm. So... Um. It kind of looks like Beatrice's. Yes, it does. Same color combo. We, we, have to we, wear can, those be mannequin, we can be mannequin twins. <laughs> right. Mannequin twins. Yeah, so that's it's coming along and it's fun to knit and I love love the pashmina it's yarn. It's really soft. So, yeah. Really, really, really soft. But unfortunately things get set aside because I have to do work socks. <laughs> so and I have one last whip. One last whip. One last whip. I should have showed these in the mittens, but it's another um Ooh, it's another fingerless glove pattern. So this one is called um, Susie Rogers' Favorite Reading Mitts. <laughs> and it's by Susie Rogers. There you go. And this is done in Barocco Providence. Um, and the Providence, I think I have the tag for it. The Providence is a, it's merino wool, baby alpaca and silk. So it's kind of got a, when you look at the skein, there's a real nubby. Yeah, I think that's the silk. It's soft. It's really yes, soft. it's really soft. Um, and then the... The mohair is just, um, really I got that mohair, mohair, like before mohair even became a thing. Before it was trendy <laughs> to be mohair. And that was Elan. There used to be a site called Elan.com and they sold different yarns. And it's a, it's a it was called their Silken Kid and it's a... 70% mohair, 30% silk. It's really pretty. That's so, so pretty. And then you can see the little Pico mm -hmm. pattern at the top and at the bottom. I customize these to fit my wrist perfectly because um, you start out bigger and then around here would have been bigger, but I, I decreased down to the size that I know is just going to hug my mm -hmm. wrist. And yeah, I really like them. They feel nice and soft and and so go with every pink thing you own. That's right. And then I've got the second one started. It's under here. Yeah. So again, it's just got the little pico edge, which you do just by knitting some rows. And then you've got your eyelet row, and then that just gets turned under and tacked down once you're mm -hmm. done. But that's a free pattern on Ravelry. And again, that would make a gorgeous present for someone. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're really Beautiful. fun to do. This yarn, my, uh, my son's girlfriend, actually, she's from New Brunswick, and she brought it back for me when she was out there at Christmas last year. It's pretty. So, yeah, I really like it. I actually like that fabric. I, would, I wouldn't mind a sweater made out of that fabric. Yeah, that's nice. It's so nice. It's another love note. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's pretty. But, I mean, it's amazing how much just putting a strand of mohair changes, changes something. Because, like, even if you look at the tone of the yarn, like, this is much lighter, and that just makes it, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just it just gives it another richness, but you don't really look at it and say, "Oh, there's there's a strand of, of yarn and mohair all together." No, like it looks like they kind of because it doesn't mute out. You can still see all the little naps of the silk and stuff throughout it. It doesn't hide that. No, and you just get the nice little halo. Well, that's even like so. This sweater. So actually, if you were this color here, just this this cream color, mm -hmm. is a lot what the orbit looked like. 
Oh, before you before it. Yes. And then just by adding the, a strand of uh, like this gold colored mohair completely changed it. But I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big difference. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. between but it, it's just that one well strand. this is more this is more subtle because the the two yarns are, are similar so much colors. closer whereas you had kind of like a cream colored base and then the gold yeah. yeah because one of the love notes that i did for molly hers was like the base yarn was like this but with pink flex all through it right and then i used the pink mohair, pink mohair. and it just gave it a really soft mm -hmm. yeah so i'm definitely a mohair addict <laughs> okay so now we can move on to Acquisitions. Acquisitions. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to talk about acquisitions. Acquisitions. Okay, did, did you want? Okay, I'll show you mine. <laughs> That's it. Just two. Um, that was your fault. <laughs> <laughs> so we, in the last episode, we showed off the night shift shawl and went on and on and on about how much we loved making it in the Noro Akari. And then I liked it so much that I ordered two more to make a gray and gray purple. black and a purple uh, pink color. And then when I had ordered the other colors, uh, a coworker had ordered colors that I, I helped her pick and I helped her pick these two colors and then she finished hers and she brought it into work to show me and i'm like oh my god i need those colors this this color i can't even i can't even tell you how beautiful it worked out i can <laughs> <laughs> so then noelle said oh i like that color too and so then when we both saw the finished shawl we we i know i said i have to have that and then kelly said okay i have to have it too <laughs> But this was my only purchase. This is it. But this, this is, I bought this one, but you already from a previous had. purchase, I had this one, which is slightly different than yours. Yeah, yours is so more, like if we hold them up this way, you're going to see how the shawl is going to be a little bit different, yeah. right? And, uh, but the, the, it's just, I just love I this know. yarn. It, the yarn is so soft and the shawl is so enjoyable to knit. It is. It like is. it's a slip stitch pattern, so it's really meditative it's not hard it grows quickly mm -hmm. and you're mm -hmm. always seeing the variation in the colors and you can't put it down because you're yep. like oh i want to see the next two yep. and because you have no idea how it's going to work out it's just yeah it's just where you well, change the you colors could, you could have we could both have the exact same colors and it would not look the same no it would look like a totally different so. shawl it's where you where you flip your yarns yep. and the best part is there's two ends at the beginning of the shawl and there's two ends at, at the, the end, end of the, the shawl, shawl because you, you're going to use this whole so yeah yeah anyway and i wanted to cast this on the minute i got it but i thought no i have, I, to, I I have too, mittens to do i had i have stuff to do so i did the mittens in the past week and a half and then i did a lot of sewing yes. so i have that coming up too but so that now i i could cast these on now i can't <laughs> not yet okay so okay we'll do these first Okay, so a while back, probably, it was probably before the last podcast, but I had ordered from John Arbin in uh, the United Kingdom. Um, I ordered fleece, but I'll show that once I get my spinning wheel, because I still haven't gotten that yet. But I did want to try some of his um, Exmoor sock yarn. So I picked out a couple of colors. So this first one is called Hamel. It's kind of a greeny, I don't know. I think Hamel means something, but I'm not sure what. It looks foresty sort it's of. It's like a foresty green. Yeah, yeah, but it's um, it does feel rusticy. It does. But uh, but that's what I was looking for. I mean, the yarn is, what does it say? It is here. It is blue or Exmoor blue face, Corydale, Zwart bulls, and nylon. Yeah, that's pretty close there. I think when I'm seeing yes. it on the screen, that's pretty close. It's yep. like a hunter green, but it's even like you can tell. Even just by labels, when when yarns come from a different country than yeah. ours, right? Like this is, you know, it's not some, it's it's kind of like an antique looking label, label, yes. right? Yeah. The just the styling yep. of it. And I think the colors. I think that the raw fleece that they dye this on has color in it. Like it's not a white, and that's why you kind of get the muted or I don't know, kind of like when you dye on something that's not the pure white, the colors come out a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's subdued or. 
I know, yeah. they're more natural looking to me. They are, but it's a, I mean, it's a solid color. Like yep. there's definitely no tones in there. It's, you know, it's a solid dye. Yeah. Right. And then this was the other color, which is not pink. <laughs> oh, I, I would argue that there's a variation of pink in there. And that color is called Bibble Bug. <laughs> Okay, and maybe the names are a little different when they come from a different country, too. It's really pretty, though. Yeah, it's I really like color. it. So, yeah, so I got those. Now, the rest of the acquisitions that I have, um, I didn't buy them. <laughs> Noelle was, had a birthday yesterday. No, two, not days, two ago. days ago two now. Days ago. Two days ago. Yes, and um, some of my, my children got me yarn. So the yarn that I'm showing now was, was gifts. It wasn't yarn that I bought. All gifted yarn. All gifted yarn. Okay, so the, the first one here, this is my son and his girlfriend. They ordered me a bunch of yarn. It's all Briggs and Little. So some of it's not, not yarn. This is actually their country roving. So this color is, what did I say, Kelly? Forest green? Forest green. Forest green. And then this is the country blue. But it's really neat. It's like when you take it apart, it's like five, five strands. Five strands. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to knit with the five strands together or if I'm going to separate it out because it's a lot like the um, Plutalope. She's going to call four friends and have a stranding party. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Yeah, it's it's a pretty color though. It's like a, I wouldn't call it a green. I call it almost like a peacocky. That yeah, it's yeah, but the two peacock. colors look nice together. Yeah, it's like so. yeah, a teal. It's pretty. But anyways, yeah. So I'm interested to see. I haven't decided for sure if I'm going to knit with it or I'm going to spin it because you can, actually can spin this kind of roving. So I haven't decided whether I'll, I'll spin it or knit it. Well, if you're splitting that this into like five, that's a long amount of yardage. So you'll be able to do more than one project. Yeah. Yeah, because there's there's. It'd be so pretty in a blanket though. Yeah. Even there's eight ounces in each while. in each one of these, so. Okay, so that was the first one. And then there was different <laughs> yarns from Briggs & Little. So this first one here, this is Briggs & Little Atlantic, and it's their chunky weight. And I think with that, I'm going to probably do a pair of slippers, like a color work pair of slippers. Mm -hmm. um, the purpley color is called Mulberry, and it's gorgeous. It's got so many tones in it. Like you can see blues, pinks, mm -hmm. That's really it's pretty. heathered. I would call heathered, it heathered, yes. right? And then this is their sheep's gray. So I think this is a natural. It's undyed, but that's just the color of the sheep. Mm -hmm. So that's the the three ply weight. It's rustic. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> There's 135 yards in a, in 113 grams for that one. Then this one I've never actually had before. This is their Tuffy, and their Tuffy is. Um, there's 215 yards in here. It's basically an Aran weight. It's 17 stitches to four inches, but the Tuffy's got, I believe, a little bit of nylon in it. So you actually could do like thicker socks with that, mm -hmm. but they definitely would be like socks that you would be putting in boots. They wouldn't be socks that you would. It would make great hats though too. Yes, it would. Because the, the, it's such a dense. Fab yeah. Yeah. And again, that, col that color is called Rosewood. And that and looks I love like that that's heathered too. Yes, I would call it's that one heathered. There's a lot of color in there. It's very pretty. Okay, and then these ones. This one is their, their Regal, and Regal is like a, I would call it like a DK to a, a worsted weight. This color is called Fundy Fog, and I love it. It's just beautiful. It's like tones of lavender and a little bit of blue and a little bit leans towards gray. And mm -hmm. So anyways, this one is 100% wool and there's like 272 yards in there. So I mean that you could probably make a hat and a pair of mitts. So very nice and sheepy. Sheepy. <laughs> and then this is their um, heritage label and the heritage label is a an Aran weight. Again, it's the 17 stitches, 215 yards. This color is called Seafoam. And it's, it's gray, but it leans a little bit towards like the bluey green. Mm -hmm. So... I get you right. Like those would make perfect hats and mm -hmm. for winter for like out walking your dog or well warm too. Warm, like yeah. I just feel like the wind can't get through these. Yep. I just I actually and I love knitting with that yarn. <laughs> Sorry. And then the last one here, the last um I guess they're on in their product line. This is their sport weight. It is four ounces. 
430 yards, but that's that's a lot like the yarn that we're knitting the mittens with. It's a little thicker. A little bit thicker, maybe. And this is that, oh, this heathered purple again. Yeah, that's the mulberry. You can see the blues in there. Like, I'm turning it right to the light. But it's absolutely beautiful. It must have been curly sheep. Look at these. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the well, yarn is curly. It's just a one ply. <laughs> and then that's um, red heather. Mm -hmm. And then this one is gray heather. That doesn't look great to me. No. But I know. I've, I've seen that one before, teal. and it is called gray heather, but... But yeah, so I think I'm actually going to do some color work stuff with some of those. I do have some, of, I do have some, it's not Bridge and Little, but I do have some similar yarn in the white. Oh, or so, I was thinking like a cream would look really yeah. nice with that too. But yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a cream or a bleached white. Yeah. Okay, so then this last acquisition that was a gift, again, I didn't buy it, came like this. So this is um, my son and daughter-in-law got this. This is from Polka Dot Creek and it's one of their sock sets. And I believe the sock set, well, it says right here, it's called Lagoon or the main color is called Lagoon and then it comes with two minis. minis. So we'll open it up. I've never had, I've never done this before. You've never had I've those? I've never oh, had this oh. before. Never done this before. I love squishy packages. So here we go. I'm glad there's lots of room at the end so you can cut without having to worry about cutting the yarn. Okay, she even, oh, look how they puff up. <laughs> So that's the burgundy and this is the spruce those are gorgeous colors beautiful colors and then this is the oh this is lagoon this color is called lagoon oh my gosh that's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. your family has good taste yes they do <laughs> so and this is the lagoon so that'll look nice with those gorgeous yeah it's got the colors the way they go and polka dot creek is in alberta so pretty. Yep. I don't want I have to there. wait to knit some of these things till, till after Christmas. <laughs> well, you know, if you didn't have so many kids that needed work socks. So, yes. Well. And you have one more acquisition. <laughs> Kelly. I would have had this on your birthday, but I was waiting on zippers to be delivered. And so, it's not yarn. <laughs> it's not yarn? It's not yarn. Oh, Kelly, this is gorgeous. You made this? Yeah, this is, um, you could use it on your bike. Because oh, that is gorgeous. Yeah. I use this for a purse. Well, it's, it's called. It can go over, oh. It is. Well, it goes on your back, actually. Oh, just to go on your back, yeah. okay. And so the strap is adjustable. It's the colors are gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> They're like you and me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best of both worlds. They're like pink and gold. So the Oh, that is so nice. And then the pattern is, it's a new pattern that just came out a little while ago. And then there's, oh, check inside too. You like the inside. There's, you can rip the packing out now, but. Okay. So it's called the Sandhill. Oh, it's got pockets. Yeah, it's called the Sandhill Sling. And um, the pattern. Oh, is, you got a pocket on the outside. Yes. Yeah, so there's lots of room in there. And there's an elasticized pocket, which is nice. Yeah, to hold your phone. And then there's another little pocket over yeah, here. Yeah, perfect. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, like there's no way in the world I could ever sew anything like that, ever. <gasps> oh, it was so fun. Nice. It was a lot of sewing, but it was a lot of fun too because there was some. I love this things. fabric. Yes. Is that like a? Uh, it's like just a heavier canvas weight. Yeah, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Well, and this. That's a perfect color. <laughs> that looks like the colors of all the projects we just showed. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Enjoy. Thanks. And I, you know, look, it'll hold your phone, your keys, yeah. a water bottle, and a knitting project. Well, I find that, that like lately I haven't been taking my purse and it's nice to have something like this where you can kind of separate things out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, perfect. Perfect. Yay. Thank you. Well, I felt bad not giving it to you on your ah, birthday and we, I thought, Kelly oh. took me out to lunch. We went out for Mexican food. It was a gorgeous day. We sat out on Outside, the, yeah. sat out on picnic tables and yeah, perfect for November. It's hard so. to believe it's November. It really is with this weather. It's incredible. Yep. Enjoying it so yep. much. Okay. So now we'll move on. Kelly has a shop update. Wow, you've been busy. I've been busy sewing this week. So this is, um, I've got some of the bags that are going into the shop. And the shop is on Etsy and it's called the Tangled Stitch Shop on Etsy. And uh, these are some of the winter bags that I've been working on. Um, 
this is a, yeah, you can, oh, I've got the tags going the wrong way, but I got it. Yep. So that's the slots. That's gorgeous. And there is a little, um, a notions. little pouch, a notions pouch, clear fronted notions pouch that goes with that one too. And then and there's the, the inside, they're all lined really nicely inside too. On the winter bags, I do all of the linings in white. Um, I find it's difficult sometimes to find coordinating fabrics when you're doing seasonal prints. And uh, anyway, so these, I like to call them winter bags too instead of Christmas bags. But then we've got the, uh, well, that one's a Christmas sweater. That's ugly Christmas sweater. I like that right? one. I have one like that. <laughs> it's very cute, but they're the ugly Christmas sweaters. Yeah. So. Yeah, because Kelly gave me one of these last year, and that's where I keep all my yarn that I do my little, my little Christmas sweaters little, from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then these are just more mittens with a candy stripe bottom. Yep. And this this size, I think this is is this your. These are the. It's called? called the Biddy Boxies, and like I can easily fit mittens, socks, yep. Yep. a cut, like easily two skeins. And they do like. They do like fold out into a bucket. So yeah, you can with set a square it beside bottom. you, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or you know, flip the rim down yep. too, and then you kind of use them like a yarn bowl. Yep. And they're all interfaced so that they will stand up on their own. There, yeah, just like that. Yeah, so they're easy to work out of and easy to take along with you. And this one, I'm sure you'll like this Ooh, one. I was gonna say. <laughs> Pink winter trees on a navy base. And... Oh, I like the snowman too. These will go with your little snowman. <laughs> They're actually, there's some penguins and puppies and bears That's and pigs cute. in there too, but they all in the shape of little snowmen. And like those, those, they're all wintry. Like you can use them all winter long. They're not specifically Christmas. No. So and this one is the winter lights. That's pretty too. With the royal blue. And this is a bigger one. So this would be more for a, you could do like a shawl project in here. And these are, I don't know, kind of little sparrows, I guess. Sparrows and... Winter birds. Yeah, that one looks, the one of them with the little crest looks kind of like a mm -hmm. cardinal. Like, yeah, or little chickadees. Yeah, but it's coral on a light blue That's pretty. base. It's really pretty too. And then the other thing that I wanted to show, I'm actually I sell quite a few of these from the shop. So I make labels as well. No, no, that's not true. I don't make labels. This is a downloadable file that you will print your own labels. And so I have them for socks. And um, you can just fold your socks in half and wrap this label around, and it just gives a a finished look. A finished look. Yeah. And then on the back, I have care instructions. Um, it says wash in cold water, lay flat to dry, and wear often. And uh, you can print these on any card stock. Is usually what I use, and uh, so I have them. This could be socks or mittens, actually. It just says hand knit for you. Mm -hmm. And then I also have this one. Um, this says handmade for I you love with love. And I use this one for mittens. And the artwork is actually by my daughter. That's so pretty. And the mug I've been drinking out of today. She gave me this for Christmas last year. It's with her, her artwork on it. She's quite That's an artist. Nice. And she's working on another sock label for me too. But, um, and when you print these, I'll just show you a couple of pages. They print out two labels per page. So this is on the brown craft paper that you can get at Michael's. It's pretty reasonable. And then this one's just on a white cardstock. So you just print them out on your home printer and cut them out and you can add them to your projects. So when we talked about the uh, mitten make along that we have, I will include the, if you send the winner, will just send me the email address and I will send you the file for the mitten labels as well to go along with your, your projects. Yeah, it just makes them, I don't know, just it makes them look finished and... Well, I get some really nice feedback on the labels. Mm -hmm. Actually, I just had somebody uh, send me a message yesterday and she said that she had put a label on and she said the people had no idea that she'd even hand knit them. Yeah. They thought that she'd bought them at you know a fancy store sure, with yeah. the labels and she said the label was just such a nice way to present the gift. Well even like because I'm looking at when I do the tea towels I could even wrap that around the because mm -hmm. I kind of roll them up you could even wrap that yeah. around that. Yeah so they're they're pretty multi-use. Yeah. Okay so I think that's it for I think that's it for today. This. Again we want to thank everybody for watching and we do have show notes so if you go underneath the YouTube video there is a link to our website and when you go on to 
the particular link for this episode. You can click on any of the any of the items that we've talked about and it will take you either to a Ravelry page or if it's a, um, a designer or a, a hand dyer, it'll mm -hmm. take you to their site. Um, we've also on there have our Instagram and Ravelry names. So for Instagram, Kelly, you are... The Tangled Stitch. And Ravelry. The Tangled Stitch. Okay, and on Instagram, I am Noelle's Knits and Pieces and on Ravelry, I am Anne's Knits and Pieces. Again, so everything will be in the show notes. And if you've got any questions, we know that um, some people are having difficulty being able to access Ravelry. If you've got any questions or can't use Ravelry, just contact either one of us and we'll do our best to answer your question. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so in the meantime, happy, happy knitting, making. Making, yes, happy, happy making. making. And enjoy the rest of this warm weather if it continues. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll see you okay, soon. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.